we try to minimize the number of operations for children with cleft lip and palate. But there's no question that revisions are necessary. And the parents usually are anxious to have a revision. If the lip's a little fat or a little thin, or if the nose a little asymmetrical, most parents want that corrected at the, at the appropriate time. Now, when it comes to an adolescent, one of the most difficult problems that we face in a child with cleft lip and palate, not just cleft palate, but a cleft lip and palate is retrusion of the face, that is an underbite. Now, young women uh, become, are, are much more advanced than young men, and they're very much aware of their appearance and concerned about it from age maybe 11 or 12 on. So we don't have any trouble convincing a young woman that if she has a severe underbite, we don't have any trouble convincing her that this should be corrected. And it often involves more than orthodontia, it involves moving the upper jaw forward. And once the upper jaw is brought forward, the lip comes forward, the teeth are in occlusion, the nose comes forward, and often that child will be transformed into what they would have been had they not had the cleft. And after the jaw is brought forward, I often recommend a final revision of the nose if necessary or a little, little tweaking or alteration of the lip if necessary and if they want it. But we don't have trouble convincing young women, but sometimes we have trouble convincing young men. And it's very interesting uh, that young men, uh, especially uh, in their late teenage years, are, seem to be more involved with sports and other activities. They're not so concerned with their appearance. And I've always felt that a young man with an underbite uh, looks strong. They have a strong lower jaw, and young men don't tend to look at themselves from the side. They don't know how to hold the mirror. And they're just not, they're not so into their appearance. They may well be, but not, not at the level that, they're, uh, that the young women are. Uh, and so some, in, a, in, a, in a percentage of young men, we have trouble convincing them, and they're now six feet two and shaving you know, twice a day, and they, the parents say, well, you really should have your jaw worked on. I say, I'm, I'm not anxious to have any more operations. I've been to the hospital too many times. So we are, we've seen this problem, and we're, we're concerned about it because as, as the sculptor or the physician, we want to see the final Product. We want to see the child totally as looking as good as they can, as speaking as good as they can, have the best possible teeth, and, and be able to go out in society and become everything they could possibly be. And we have trouble sometimes with the guys, so we're going to have we're organizing a symposium and bringing young people together, people who've, young people who've had the operation, people who are reluctant to have the operation, to try to figure out how to communicate with them. It's not a matter of just showing them pictures. Uh, whether we have to do it in an MTV format or some sort of interactive video, we, do, we haven't figured that out yet. But I think it's an interesting uh, problem and parents of teenagers uh, face this uh, quite frequently.